of Ambassel and Rosera Sehin Nikael. Her mother was the daughter of King Nikael of Wolo and her uncle was Lijri Yasu. According to both published and unpublished reports, the then Mozera Menin Aspo was first given in marriage by her family to the prominent Wolo nobleman Desjemaj Ali of Chiricha at a very young age. She was about 12. She was the prevailing custom. She, as was the prevailing custom, sorry, she bore him two children. A daughter, Rosera Belainesh, Belainesh, and a son, Janitor Asfar Ali. This first marriage ended in a divorce, and her natal family then arranged for Rosera Menin to marry this Jemaj Amede Ali Abadeas, another very prominent nobleman of Wolo. She bore him, her second husband, two children as well. A daughter, Wazira Desta Amede, and a son, Janitwar Gebre, Z Gebre Ziabir Amede. <coughs> Following the sudden death of her second husband, Wazira Menin's grandfather, Nigos Mikael, arranged her marriage to Ras Lul, Lul Seged. Atnaf Segeb, a prominent Shoan nobleman who was considerably older than Mazira Menin in late 1909 or early 1910. It is unclear whether Mazira Menin was married to the aged nobleman and secured a divorce shortly afterwards to marry her royal groom, or whether there was only an engagement between them which was broken without ado. Wazira Menin probably met Desjemach Tafari Makonin, later the Emperor Haile Selassie, at home, at the home of her uncle, Lijiasu. The rapport between the two may have inspired Lijiasu to attempt to bind Desjemach Tafari to him more firmly through marriage ties. He therefore terminated the arrangement, whether marriage or engagement, between Mozera Menin and Rasul Zakal, and sent her to Harar to marry Tafari, Desjemash Tafari Makonin. Rasul Zakal apparently did not hold a grudge against Desjemash Tafari for this circumstance, blaming it entirely on Lija Su, who had ordered it. Indeed, he was among the leaders who fought on the side of Desjemach Tafara Makonin in the Battle of Sagale and died in that battle. The account given in, in the autobiography of the Emperor, My Life and Ethiopia's Progress, mentions no previous marriage or children of Empress Menin and no such order by Yasu, but states only that at the age of 20, they were married by their own mutual consent and describes her as a woman without any malice whatsoever. When Tafari Makonin became emperor of Ethiopia as Haile Selassie I, Menin Asfa was crowned as empress at his side. Empress Menin had no children by Rasul Zagad. Empress Menin was active in promoting women's issues in Ethiopia. She was patroness of the Ethiopian She was patroness of the Ethiopian Red Cross and the Ethiopian Women's Charitable Organization. She was also patroness of the Jerusalem Society that arranged the pil for pilgrimages to the Holy Land. She founded the Empress Menin School for Girls in Addis Ababa the first of all girls' schools, which had both boarding and day students. Girls from all over the empire were brought to the school to receive a modern education, encouraged by the empress, who visited it often and presided over its graduation ceremonies. The empress gave generously, as well as sponsored programs for the poor, the ill, and disabled. She was also a devoutly religious woman 
who did much to support the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahida Church. She built, renovated, and endowed numerous churches in Ethiopia and in the Holy Land. Prominent among these are the St. Raguel Church in Addis Ababa, Mercato District, the Kidani Marriott, Our Lady Convent, Coven, Covenant of Mercy um, Church in Mountain Toto, and the Holy Trinity Monastery on the banks of the River Jordan in the Holy Land. She gave generously from her personal funds towards the building of the new cathedral of St. Mary of Zion at Axum, but did not live to see it completed and dedicated. When the Empress was exiled from Ethiopia during the Italian occupation from 1936 to 1941, she made a pledge to the Virgin Mary at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, promising to give her crown to the church if Ethiopia were liberated from occupation. The Empress made numerous pilgrimages to holy sites in then British ruled Palestine, in Syria, and in Lebanon during her exile to pray for her occupied homeland. Following the return of Emperor Haile Selassie I and his family to Ethiopia in 1941, a replica of the crown was made for future empresses. Sorry about that. But the original crown that Empress Menin was crowned with at her husband's side in 1930 was sent to the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. Empress Menin, although often seen wearing a tiara at public events that called for it, would never again wear a full crown. Empress Menin performed perfectly in the role of Empress Consort. In her public role, she combined religious piety, concern for social causes, and support for development schemes with the majesty of her imperial status. Outwardly, she was a dutiful wife, visiting schools, churches, exhibitions, and model farms, attending public and state events at her husband's side or by herself. She took no public stand on political or policy issues. Behind the scenes, however, she was the emperor's most trusted advisor, quietly offering advice on a whole range of issues. She avoided the publicly political role that her predecessor and as Empress Consort, Empress Taitu Betul, had taken, which had caused deep resentment in government circles during the reign of Menelik II. The Empress and some of her family were placed under house arrest during, briefly during the 1960 Imperial Guard coup attempt against her husband at her villa outside the Den Ganete Lul Palace grounds in northern Addis Ababa. Following the return of the emperor and the crushing of the coup attempt, there was much speculation as to the conduct of the crown prince, who had been proclaimed monarch by the coup leaders. It was noted that the crown prince had accompanied his mother in a drive through the palace grounds, making stops at imperial guard posts to exchange pleasantries with the guards on the night before the coup was launched. The ailing empress had been urged to visit the post by security officials who were concerned about the soldiers' morale and perhaps had an idea that something was brewing. The appearance of the empress with the crown prince at her side may have have been used by coup leaders as an indication to their followers that the Empress might sympathize with a movement that brought her favored son to the throne. It is extremely unlikely that either the Empress or the Prince had any idea of what was being plotted. However, a cloud of suspicion never left the Crown Prince and the Empress was deeply saddened by this. Following her death in 1962, 
The Empress was buried in the crypt of Holy Trinity Cathedral in Addis Ababa among the tombs of her children. Prime Minister Akilu Haptewol delivered her eulogy paying tribute to her charity, her piety, and her role as advisor and helpmate to the Emperor as well as her personal kindness and goodness. On the third day, memorial and commemoration after the funeral, the emperor himself paid tribute to his wife by saying that although the prime minister had aptly described what kind of person his late wife had been, he wanted to say that during their five decades of marriage, not once had it been necessary to have a third party meditate, mediate sorry, between him and his wife, and that their marriage had been one of peace and mutual support. Later, the emperor built a pair of grand sarcophagi in the north transept of the Holy Trinity's cathedral nave in order to transfer his wife's remains there and eventually be buried at her side himself. But due to the revolution, the emperor was not buried there. Uh, and the empress remained in her original tomb in the crypt. During the ceremonial burial of her husband's remains, the, the remains of Empress Menin were also disinterred from the crypt tomb and placed in the, in the church to be in the cathedral as he had originally intended. There are some honors that we have that she, she has been lauded with. Knight of Grand Color of the Order of Solomon, Knight Grand Cordon of the Order of the Seal of Solomon, Knight Grand Cordon with Color of the Order of the Queen of Sheba, Imperial Coronation Medal in 1930, Refugee Medal in 1944, and Jubilee Medal in 1955. She is also a member of the Royal Order of the Seraphim, King of Kingdom of Sweden, in in 19th on the 19th of December, 1959. There is not much to be said about Empress Menin. There is hardly any literature about her, but this is as much as we can get. And you can also go and continue some research for yourself because it would be so interesting for you to find out about this phenomenal woman. Thank you very much. I now turn you over to the drums of Rastafari. I the eyes, Rastafari. Ethiopians come, Rasta have a message for you. I say come, Ethiopians come, Rasta have a message for you. Tell them Mount Zion gates are open wide, Zion gates. Rasta have a message for you. I say, come, my Ethiopian son. Rasta have a message for you. Tell them, Mount Zion gates are open wide. Zion gates are open wide. Zion gates. Say, come, my 
Ethiopians come Rasta have a message for you
Mr. 